Ancient Egyptian culture exists around a series of temples built in carefully chosen sites along the Nile. Egyptian wisdom says all forms of universe grow outward towards expansion. All expansion needs a container which protects the development. Each temple is a receptacle which allows the development of civilization to expand within the individual. Each temple manifests a different experience of universal understanding, a different fundamental principle, and is used to communicate that principle to produce an evolution of consciousness within the being. Each temple plays the role of duality within a physical, non-physical system in the body. Each performs a different role devoted to teaching and exploring a universal topic. In this way, we can move beyond the hypnotic influences of duality. Temple Dendera is located on the 26th degree north latitude of an ancient road that leads to the Red Sea. The New Year's ceremony takes place each year on a starry evening of summer solstice. This is called the Dawn of Civilization. It occurs in an area over the Nile carefully chosen because of its direct relationship to certain stars. The Pharaoh of Egypt and the wisdom keepers of the Mystery School of the Eye locate a group of stars over in the North Pole of the planet. They call it the Constellation of Credit, and its symbol is a red hippopotamus mother. Currently, we call the same group of stars Draconis, and its symbol is a dragon serpent. This is the constellation for both the North Node and the South Node in astrology. It is called Ketu and Rahu in Vedic astrology. And it is the powerful point of reference for the soul path chart of astrology called the Draconic Chart. The most brilliant of all stars is Alpha Draconis. This star is located exactly over the axis of the planet every 25,920 years. The current lunar south pole is Delta Doradus, and the north pole is Omnicon Draconis. We are slowly moving towards Polaris but have a few more thousand years before it is directly above our planet's axis. The top two stars in the Northern Cross point to the North Celestial Pole of Mars. The first is Sidir and the second is Deneb. Over the procession of the equinox, we circle six successive North Pole stars, and when a new North Pole begins to reign, we call it a new heaven, or universal influence over which all minor celestial events become influenced. In this way, the cosmic influence of consciousness never becomes stale 
whereas the same event occurs habitually. This is the greatest joy and pleasure we seek for our journey of non-physical in physical form. 5,000 years ago, Alpha Draconis was the pole star. We have 4,000 years to go to reach Polaris as our North Star. 8,000 years from then, our North Star will be Vega. And another 8,000 years from there, the North Star procession will return to Alpha Draconis to start the process again. Each guiding pole star along the procession of the equinox brings a new form of greater awareness to the awakening consciousness on Earth. You see, the movement of the solar system in its revolution around the center of the galaxy determines that during the cycle of 25,920 years, six different stars would shine over the North Pole. The pole star represents the fundamental motherly force in the sky, the generator of the substance that develops the expansion of consciousness in the universe. The vibration of conscious birth, called Hathor, is consecrated and expressed in the elements that form the walls of Dendra. During its construction, a line is oriented between two stakes pointing towards Alpha Draconis. These stakes form a physical axis towards the cosmic star. The direction of the temple axis is set. Then the four cornerstones are set to begin the protective wall of the complex. A very high wall is created to fence out vibrations and thought forms from those who desire a different path than the universal principle being offered. In the principal door located northward, the last series of aligned doors departing the temple frames the sky segment where Alpha Draconis appears. This makes Alpha Draconis easy to find for the wisdom keepers who systematically register movements during the night celebration of the dawn of civilization. That same night, but facing west, they locate another star at 90 degrees to the previous one. It is called Sirius and is a symbol of Isis in the sky. There is a second temple built in her honor with its access and the second door in the wall of the Dendera complex aligned in the star's direction. The door of the temple of Isis frames the section of sky where Sirius travels with the sun, trailing her and appears on each 21st day of June. On the day of the summer solstice, the wisdom keepers record the movement the stars made in the procession of the equinox. They study the process, experiencing the energies of the moon's effect on each constellation and embedded the secret wisdom in pictures not words, on the walls of Dendra so that it would be felt and experienced, not logically formed as opinion. Sirius, the symbol of Isis, is called the dog star because it follows the Orion constellation. The reappearance of Sirius in the sky after being hidden for a hundred and twenty days marks the first forty days of the first season of water, the flooding. Sirius is very important 
because of its use to divide the year into three periods called tetramans. Each tetraman has four eras with three weeks, each week being ten days. The New Year's festivities begin when Sirius reappears in the doorway of Dendra. After 40 days, the star disappears from the doorway. This calendar and the synchronizations of life with the sun and the stars are so crucial that in ancient history, the pharaohs, upon assuming their high roles, had to swear never to change the dates of the calendar. The summer solstice appeared each year, and upon entering Dendra for the ceremony, the visitor passes a series of columns which frame the north door. These columns are enclosed in the massive walls which protect the temple. Upon crossing the portal, the principal outer sentinel or room of life, the temple appears with six columns and its north oriented axis precisely aligned for the study of the stars. Very near the entrance of the complex, the carving of conscious illumination is found. It depicts the birth of Horus from Isis and his father Osiris. Its carved love scene shows Isis and Osiris the birth of their son Horus and the presentation of the child. The scene is of birth of the boy into material form. Over each of its columns is the protector of pregnant women that favors the birth of children. Hathor, the feminine force multiplier of life, is revered as a compassionate figure. People travel long distances to awaken inner consciousness. The design of the facade of Hathor's temple is different from the traditional Egyptian temples. The columns are joined mid-height by decorated walls. The 18 columns of the Room of Life support a very high roof carved with information about the stars and their movements. Symbolically, the sky was supported by Hathor's columns. Each column has the form of the sistrum, the sacred instrument that induces vibration. It is with a series of metal discs used by female wisdom keepers of Hathor Dance and music were combined to produce a singular event which explores consciousness in the individual. On top of the columns, four faces of Hathor look towards each cardinal point of cosmic space, symbolizing her force supporting the astrological force of change present everywhere in the world. The astronomy tables have been created through hundreds of generations of wisdom keepers so that this knowledge would not disappear forever because of religion or governments. All draconic constellations with their symbols are represented over the sacred boats 
along the symbols of the skies. In the room of life, the scribes wrote the ritual words and the astronomical tables on sacred papyrus. This small room stored the papyrus used every day. In the school of the mystery of Horus, art, theology, universal law, astronomy, consciousness, and physical body awakening were taught to those ready for the awakening. The wisdom keepers systematically recorded the movements of the circumpolar constellations to track the precession of the equinoxes. Once a year, from the apparition's room, a brilliant golden statue of the goddess Hathor would be brought forth, leaving the darkness of his sanctuary and proceed through the temple to the roof. There, on the highest floor devoted to the symbol of conscious development, the process through which reincarnation transmutes original body and permits humans to become super beings. The famous Dendera Zodiac illustrates how this evolution of consciousness occurs while the solar system orbits around the center of the galaxy. Around this room are found the six spaces for the daily rituals. The first kept the objects devoted to consciousness. The next is the room for purification with a door leading to the sacred lake. dawn, each individual was held within as sacred and birthed themselves with water as an emotional mirror to the body of water within, the body of water that feeds the earth, and the body of water that vibrates with electrical pulses from the universe. The sacred lake is lined with stone staircases to allow the priest to get into the water on one side and to come out through another stone staircase into a new experience. They then came back into the next room. From here, a spiral staircase leads to the terrace of the temple used during the night record of celestial movements. To the left, there is a door that leads from this fourth room to the outside to receive the full breath of all that nature provides. Next is the room of the apparition. After the room of the apparition comes the hall of two staircases to the right, the spiral staircase. These are used by the procession, each turn of the staircase symbolizing the spiral of light. Each turns a higher vibration in the musical scale of consciousness. To the left, there is a long, straight staircase used as the symbol of spirit which descends into matter to embody and live the experiences that allow for the comprehension of the universe. To the left is the golden boat, or always transforming experience. It is a symbol of all movement. You see the movement of the sun, solar system, galaxy, universe, constellations, and the movement of human consciousness is the boat of life. The boat carries the cycle of the moon. Together the moon and boat carry the figure of Hathor, the potential of awakened consciousness, through the water or emotions to the next temple of Horus in Edifu. 
In the process of the new moon, the events of awakening unfold from the non-physical to physical. In the procession of the full moon, the events of the awakening unfold from the physical back to the non-physical. Deeper into the temple it becomes darker, the ceilings get lower, and the doors more narrow. The floors rise up to allow the individuals to clearly see the star Alpha Draconis. Finally, in the deepest part aligned with its axis in the heart of the temple, the most sacred space, the inner experience of the Philosopher's Stone. The Awakened Self. The individual as infinite, both male and female, part of the whole, individual within the whole. The male that emits information and the female that provides the substance to gestate all beings. There are three names to the masculine part of the infinite. To distinguish separate function, it was called tum when vibrations remained motionless containing absolute information before creation of the universe, each new choice being a newly created universe. It is called Tom when set in motion to emit the information that creates the universe, the stars, the planets, and the natural kingdoms on them. And it is called Utam when the vibration of a new universe is created within the consciousness of man. In the same way, the feminine part also has three names. It is called Noon when in one homogeneous substance of amniotic liquid universe without form and in a state of perfect balance. It is called Sekhmet as liquid universe takes the multiplying principle of movement and reconciles and harmonizes temporarily the opposing forces and produces movement in time-space. Its intensity condenses matter into successive states of water, air, earth, and fire, and also produces the force of life represented by Hathor. The substance multiplies consciousness to experience space-time. It is called Hermut when the creation is birthed into the four forces of nature of the physical body expanding through connection with the etheric or infinite consciousness. In this way the feminine principle is the boat of life. The boat of life represents the greatest gift and receipt of consciousness in the universal cycle of infinity. The boat of the north contains the fundamental forces of nature and the twelve hypnotic influences to be awakened within the truth-seeking individual.
Here, an intake vestibule accesses a series of vibrational rooms set against the exterior walls of the temple, devoted to the fundamental vibrations. These vibrational rooms have sacred symbols carved on the exterior walls of the temple to connect the inner and outer worlds of the individual's experience. The carved symbols also on the exterior wall and the two connecting vibrational rooms to the left contain figures which harmonically resonate with one particular fundamental force or vibration, along with the musical system used in the awakening within the site. The four vibrational rooms to the right contain the vibrations of Horus, Sokar, Pisces, and the Gnome of Dendra. To the left is the lower room, which shows the necklace of Menach with four figures of Hathor representing the four universal elements, harmony, love, wisdom, and freedom. Under the floor of this room is stored the most sacred and secret revelations of the temple. These rooms hold mysterious carvings of Horus handling a lotus flower blossom with a serpent in its interior. The flowers can be found in fundamental nature and universe to illuminate the interior chamber of the human self, to construct the pathway of darkened self to enlightened self. Upon ascending the straight staircase, we again arrive at the roof terrace where celestial events are recorded. In the southwest corner, there is a stone gazebo. From this location, a fire is built declaring the beginning of each new year. It is also from this location that the wisdom keepers gathered to divide the celestial vault into sections they called norms in order to identify the movements of the stars. We now know these as signs. The individual is to look for signs in their awakening. These wisdom keepers in relation to the planet Earth, measures of the sky, made the first celestial chart, the one which recorded the relative positions of the sky. Astronomy began here in Dendra. Astro means star. Astronomy means knowledge of the stars. Crossing this terrace, we arrive at the two areas devoted to Osiris. the two divine principles which symbolize evolution and reincarnation of all human beings.